Okay, this is my 100th episode. We finally made it. Feels like I should have a cake and balloons or something. Or maybe one of those corny best of shows where you reminisce with, with past guests or something. I don't know. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Let's get to it. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. 2,000 years later. So, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm your old and still going and not so humble host, Eric Wilson. You can still find me at eric at ibf.org. That's eric at ibf.org. Thanks for the follows and subscribes. Everything you do to help support us over the past four Four years to get to the 100th episode. We have finally made it to the 100th episode. So I think I'm going to take a vacation after this one for a little bit. So, so soak this one in because you may not get one for another month or so. But you made it to now and we're going to we will continue on. We aren't stopping at this point. So please continue to share these, like these, everything you do to help grow our network, our tribe together, so as we get to 200 episodes, maybe four years from now. I want to thank our special sponsor for four whole years and all of 100 episodes as well. They were at it from the very beginning. They've stuck with us all the way through, so we must be doing something right. Actually, you guys must be doing something right and showing them some love because they keep coming back for more and sponsoring more episodes. So thank you, Arkiva, a very special sponsor, a good friend of mine as well as, as an organization. I've worked with them in the past. Uh, they are a great company. They supply everyone from the hundred million dollar company to the hundred billion dollar company and everyone in between they have a product for everyone end-to-end supply chain integration driving business transformation by solving what others cannot thank you arkiva for being a great sponsor to this podcast eric congratulations on the hundred episode of the podcast arkiva is very excited to be working with you to be a key sponsor for this podcast and to always be with you at these ibf conferences job well done Congrats, congrats, congrats. March 15th, 2020. That's when it all began. Well, that's when everything fell apart shortly before then. And remember back in 2020, there was a lot going on back in 2020. I know we try to forget it. There's lots of things I try to forget as well back then. We actually had to cancel conferences Online events was really not yet a thing back in March and 15th of 2020. So what happened was we were trying to figure out what we were going to do. We didn't know how long COVID was going to last. We didn't understand exactly what was going to happen. You didn't understand what was happening as well. So there was a need to get a connection with the audience. IBF is a membership organization, been around for 42 years now at that point, 38, 39 years at that point. It's been around. And it was always about fostering the growth of demand planning, supply planning, predictive analytics, sales and operations planning, and related fields. It's about fostering the growth. And with 55,000 members worldwide, we had to try to figure out when COVID hit, what was going on, how we were going to connect with you as the audience and help give you a little bit of reassurance that, yeah, We can get through this together. That's where someone had the bright idea of let's do a podcast. Let's do one every couple weeks to share topics that are relevant to the times that we were living in and be able to connect. That's what the original concept of these podcasts were four years ago. So because people were at home, they want to be able to consume things on their own time at home. 
podcast be able to fill that void? Whether you're listening or watching, this was some consumable information you could do on your own time at home. That was one of the reasons why we wanted to do a podcast. We want, I said, we wanted to stay connected. This was a way without having to schedule events and, and plan online town halls and everything. We could just put out content and you could stay connected because we didn't want you to forget about us during COVID. So this was a way we could stay connected. And as I said, nobody knew what was going on. And we wanted to share the impact of what we were hearing from others and be able to share that with you in as close to real time as possible every couple of weeks. Sharing information about planning, bringing experts and thought leaders on so you can learn from them as well. That is the other thing we wanted to do with this podcast. Be able to help foster the growth of our field and no better way to do it than this forum. And we wanted to, most of all, be a resource for you, a resource then and a continuing resource to go forward. That is the reason and kind of the original concept we had back on March 15th, 2020. And like COVID, we thought it was going to be temporary. Originally, I recorded the first couple pilot episodes in my basement. And guess what? It sucked. It really did. I knew nothing about recording a podcast. By the fact, I still don't. I'm just winging it still four years later. But the first ep- first few episodes never aired, by the way. They sucked. Then I reached out to a good friend, Scott. That one person is behind the scenes that you never see, Scott, is the producer, the cameraman, the lighting expert. He does this for a living, and he happened to be a good friend of mine. We've worked in the past, uh, in, in prior lives, we worked together. So he has this fancy studio with fancy lighting and ex- real expensive cameras. I did buy the golden microphone I bought. Everything else he brought to the table, his expertise. So now, the podcast, they still suck, but at least I look good doing it now. So that's where we are today. Started four years ago to be able to get closer to you, to provide you those resources four years later. Guess what? That's what we still are today. We're providing resources for you. We're connecting with you. We've just grown an audience and we're all in this together. Just like in COVID, we were all in this together. Guess what? We're still all in this together. And we're going to continue to provide you experts, Thought leaders, we're going to bring to the table to interview because guarantee I'm not the expert in everything, but we're going to bring thought leaders on various subjects to be able to inform, enlighten, share that knowledge with you, this audience. That's what we did. That's what we continue to do. Our original mission has just grown, if nothing else. So thank you for being involved with this. I'm blessed to do 100 episodes. I'm blessed that you continue to watch this after all this time. So thank you very much. This, this, is, this is a special time for me. And glad you could be part of this 100th episode. Got the balloons. We're going to have a celebration. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Eric, congratulations on your 100th episode. I can't tell you how many people I speak with who share really positive feedback of what your episodes mean to them, of the fee- uh, of um, sharing your ability to speak at all different levels of uh, capabilities and of planning. Keep, keep up the good work. Yeah, absolutely, Eric. Congratulations on 100. Fantastic job doing that, navigating very complex topics during very complex times. You know, we've talked about sales and operations, execution you know, during COVID. We've talked about all kinds of things. Uh, but your ability to, to really embody the learn, share, advanced ethics, the motto of IBF, uh, it's been inspiring for me and for Jay, I'm sure, as well. So keep it up, and here's to the next 100. Congrats. Congratulations, Congratulations on 100 episodes, Eric, and here's to 100 more. In four years... We have had over 300,000 views on YouTube. And as I mentioned, listening, about twice as many people listen. So we're probably close to a million now downloads on streaming platforms right now. That is a lot of people consuming our content over the past few years. 
This was the third episode I had, and actually the very first guest. See, I first couple I just struggled by myself talking to myself and talking to a camera. The third guest, the third episode I had was the very first guest I had. And that's why I wanted to bring him back on as the first guest ever. He's actually been on a couple times. Andrew Snyder is a close friend of mine, a good strategic thinker. Help me welcome back, Andrew. So welcome back, Andrew, the 100th episode. So what you might not know, hey, you may not know this, but when we started March 15th of 2020, you were the first person I called to help support it, to bring you on. You were the very first person I called. Well, thank you. And congratulations on 100. From 1 to 100, I'm super blessed to be here, super happy to be your industry friend and personal friend, and thank you for calling back. Of course, I had to have you on. I said, not only as, the, as our first guest, but I said, you've been on since then. And I said, you are a friend. I, I, I kind of called you a strategic thinker. You are there as well. So as when we go into the next 100, you can help give me some ideas for that as well. Yeah, so. Fantastic. I look forward to being at 200. So. There you go. You yeah, you, you have to now. So yeah. Yeah. So yep. so with this, I, I think you, you mentioned you know hundredth episode. We're going to do one hundred tips. So people, hang on for the next two hours. We're, we're going to be done. <laughs> My notes. One hundred tips. <laughs> so when I originally have you on with COVID, we we brought people on to really talk about things that were bothering them, things that we're doing. Segmentation came up over and over again early on. And that's the reason why I had you come on originally talked about segmentation because that was an important topic. People had to look at things differently and knew, figured out things are all wasn't created equal, customers, items. So people started talking about segmentation. So the reason I first had you on was talk about segmentation. And I think people are still doing it now today. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, and the wonderful thing about segmentation is focusing in on different tactics um, and not treating everything with one paintbrush as you look at reducing the number of planning records you have into like products, like customers, like geographies, um, and even, you know, like demand profiles. Uh, so I'm still a huge proponent. The types of segmentation has changed, which is why just like any other form of stratification, it's not a one time fire and forget. We ran that top customer five years ago. I'm sure that's the same. Uh, you know, the, the deeper we go, Eric, and you've had wonderful podcasts about this into all the new techniques that have emerged using all the new technology and algorithms and machine learning, the deeper you go, you have to be able to apply all of that robustness in smarter ways and forecasting the same 1 million plus records, <laughs> trying <laughs> to do all that extra work. I doubt you're getting success in a post pandemic recovery and saying, I need to hire umpteen more demand planners. So yes, segmentation for me is a key part of solving that. Now you mentioned that originally we went on one of the things we talked about, you know, was some rules based or, you know, uh, ABC XYZ type of analysis was part of what we talked about as among other things on the first podcast. So please go back and check out Episode number three with Andrew on it, talking about segmentation. We talked about it back then. Still relevant today. But one of the things we talked about is ABC, XYZ. And I'm hearing a lot of people push back on that as, you know, the negatives of that. You don't want to do that. Is there still a place for a simple ABC, XYZ? You mentioned some of the other things people are doing now. What are some of the new processes? And, and first of all, is ABC, XYZ for the new, comp new people going into it, is it still relevant for them as well? Absolutely. So, you know, rather than applying a, a, a single ABC approach to something like uh, revenue or profitability, unit velocity, of be it your services that you're providing or your products, when you combine at least two of those variables and you say, well, I want to look at things in terms of how variable are these products, simple as low, medium and high, um, and how valuable are these products? And you can determine what that is across, like I said, different financial or operational metrics. Um, but then you start to be able to, to look at different ways that you apply your supply chain, apply your risk management and SNOP processes to, for example, a low value stable item. You know, this is my, my bread and butter. There's, you know, the time series planning. If you do what you've always done, you'll get what you've always got. So if you don't have a lot of disruption happening, it's a great thing to model from and get extreme accuracy where the higher the value and higher the volatility, 
that's where your application of a lot of the modern techniques and saying, I want to go deeper into decision trees. I want to get more into even the game theory of looking at the pandemic. How did people react to changing prices when we were on back order, competitives running uh, promotions, uh, and what do we do? That's where a lot of that robustness comes in. So I still think even that simple one, Eric, helps you with that focus um, and helps you apply those those other ways of going deeper into the problem. So even if you're just getting it started, there's still relevance to go back four years and check out the first podcast. But then also, you know, like you've done through your career, continue to grow, continue to learn new techniques and being able then to grow and apply those as we go forward as well. So so basically what so in the, in the past four years, what things are still fundamental and what things they really people need to start looking at as the next things we're doing when it comes to segmentation. Yeah, fantastic. Um, so I think segmentation in terms of what I just described, like the term variability, right? A lot of people will run that and they um, kind of get trapped inside of the box. Let's say you just got into demand analytics or demand planning in terms of how it's been presented to you. So I'm in the box of the most common one, Eric, I'm sure you would agree, monthly planning monthly SNOP, I do monthly forecasts in monthly buckets, and I produce this, and I do that in a 18 to 24 month horizon. Well, right now, you've already constrained yourself when you say, I'm going to look at all my variability in one lens, monthly. When you can have products, I love the medical world, this is a favorite one for me, of the way you see demand consumption and patterning of a Band-Aid versus an MRI machine very different and when you step back you go the selling cycle of these things is very different and the consumer between you know uh, a direct to consumer someone walking and buying a band-aid versus i have to go through a board of directors that maybe buys 10 of these a year at a hospital it's very different so what becomes fun is when you start to combine segmentation uh with being able to look at clustering analyses and say, you know what, a lot of these products are better designed for daily, weekly, monthly, bi-monthly type consumption. And you look at ABC segmentation, ABC XYZ, in terms of those different buckets, suddenly you go, you know, something that was low value variable, I'll just put a, uh, a min max on it and hope for the best. Suddenly you look at that in a different time bucket, periodicity, and you go, you know what? Now this is a stable item. I can plan this. I can forecast this and reduce the inventory carrying cost to meet that demand. So you've taken yourself out of the box you got put into, and you're starting to go back and say, is this the right profiling? Can I do more forecasting with different buckets? And when I do that, how do I then have my system and my business align around that? So that would yield something like uh, different consumption settings. So it, it's really fun. And I think that's taking something that's a solid foundational practice, moving into things we've talked about and done well the last 10 years, Eric. And now in the forward, you have so many more tools in your toolbox to be able to run these things with, with new modeling, to be able to get you these answers a lot faster. And it's not as daunting a task to say, I'm gonna look at this in four different buckets. So there you go. New tool, okay. new power. <laughs> All right. So uh, last kind of question and kind of hit on it. I said, I consider the reason I like listening. You are a strategic thinker. You, the way you, you know, kind of project forward where the trends are going. I appreciate that as well. So we've had 100 episodes that, that you've been part of consumed as well. Where are we going? The next 100, 100 episodes from now, four years from now, what are some of the things I need to start talking about, do you think, in the next 99 episodes before I have the 200th? What are some of the things you think I need to really start talking about? And are, and are people out there, the audience you're talking to right now, what do they need to be aware of going forward? Yeah, absolutely. You know, you've been a huge proponent and thought leader in the industry around the adoption of AI. What is the hype cycle? Where is this going? You know, and encouraging people start learning R, start learning Python, understand, because just like we all use calculators now and don't have to do things on paper that we did in high school, you have to understand the concept of what the calculator is doing. So I, I, I love you for doing that. What I want people to think about from my prediction, my lens, is that causal planning and the human elements of business will continue to persist. So while you might get to the point, and this could be fun podcasts of the uh, ethical issues of uh, robot to robot based planning, when you start to plan and sell and commercialize a lot of these packages that do and look at things the exact same way, 
you end up having robots programmed the same way, fighting robots pro pro fighting the same way. So when this person pulls a price lever or I see this happen on social media with my mining, then I take the following action. And then somebody see another program sees you did that, so they take the following action. And you end up dwindling each other down to the basics of service, you know, cost, um, and quality. And when it comes to then trying to disrupt that, well, what are you going to disrupt it with is things that aren't algorithmically programmed, which is the human application of, well, what if we do something different? And what would that mean? So by creating a playbook as a planner and having that intimate knowledge of, well, let me go through what I call the Rolodex of the last time we tried changing price, the last time that we tried this tactic, I've done research and run some models. The last time other competitors have done this, here was the outcome. Let's try that. If you do something different than you've always done, you'll get a different outcome. And that's going to take uh, human ingenuity. That's going to take a lot of just person to person coordination, SNOP. Um, and that's going to take the, the correct application of these systems because I don't see us going full automation. I, I know you agree. Um, and I think that there's going to be an even bigger space for, for those uh, in our field to play as they go from just coordination and trying to push a rope and sell a lot of these forward thinking concepts and are now being pulled upon and saying, what's the correct application of these? Because we aren't getting good results just putting in full automation. So look towards the future with uh, bright optimism, uh, but continue to understand how the calculator works so you can apply it in the right ways. Wonderful. That sounds like a great podcast. We might have to have you back on. We'll talk a little bit more. We can talk 30 minutes about that topic. We yeah, haven't well, done anything on ethics. I think ethics <laughs> is going to be a good topic. That's something yeah. we haven't covered, but I, I agree. That's something we probably need to talk about going forward. So it probably will be a podcast going forward now. Fantastic. Well, again, congratulations on 100. Thank you to the other guests appearing for this episode. You're doing an amazing job and amazing things for the industry. Thank you, IBF. And I look forward to continuing the journey with you guys. Thank you, and thanks for being a part of it. The celebration today. <laughs> All Thank you. Bye. Well, Eric, congratulations on uh, 100 episodes uh, of the your IBF uh, podcast. We love it. Don't stop it. We'll continue to wash our hands, and you bring more podcasts for us. Three episodes after I had Andrew on. So this is my sixth episode. I had this next exciting guest, and you thought she was as well. She was the second most watched podcast that I had over the 100, 100 different episodes and the most watched episode when it comes to any guest that I've had. So when it comes to any guest, you like this one the best. So I wanted to have her on again. I had her on since then. We, I, she's been a repeat guest as well. She went on to become the Excellence in Business Forecasting Award winner and champion in our field. A very close friend. Actually wrote the forward to my most recent book as well. Help me welcome Sarah Park again. So welcome back, Sarah. You mean, uh, so this Thank is you, your Eric. third. I don't, this is your third time on now. We've actually had oh. you on. So. Y- y- we're like good friends at this point, you know, so. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for asking me to come back on your 100th episode. How exciting. Right. It's very exciting. Why, yes. thank you. Why, yes. thank you. It, it is good. And, and you're it, celebrating it, your birthday this week. So, yes. anyway, happy birthday, Eric. See, you, you, got the, you got the cat out of the bag on that one. Nobody, nobody knew about that one. So, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what needs to be celebrated needs to be celebrated. <laughs> Why, thank you. Thank you. Yes, of course. So, so, literally four years ago was originally we had you on. I said, I can't believe it's been that long. We haven't aged a bit. Matter of fact, I think we look better now. So, <laughs> of course. <laughs> we, we talked about forecast value add was the first topic we had. I said it blew up. Amazing mm-hmm. response. It's one of the most watched podcasts from any guests that I've had on. And wow. then it was so good that I had to have you back on, I said, just about a year ago. Okay. We had you on for the second appearance, and we talked about mentorship and building teams. And I think yes. that was, for me, that was even a, a better podcast because I think it hits topics that are really special to me. And I think it's a topic that I think a lot of people need to hear about. And we really talked a little bit about that. And that was in correlation to a 
a, an article that you did, a, a 20 questions you did for the journal as well. Yes, so, yes, you're right. Yeah. It, 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 with that article, I mean, I mean, fill in the gaps a little bit about that mentorship building in teams. I mean, give give people the kind of the highlights. We can't go through the whole interview again. Right. But what were some of the highlights you think from from that article and in in really about building mentorships that you talked about? Uh, so I am trying to pay it forward uh, by mentoring others and by being visible as a role model. I know that when I started this two decades ago, there weren't a lot of Asian women (laughs) in forecasting or supply chain or supply chain planning space. And uh, I had wonderful bosses and mentors throughout my entire career. And I would not be where I am without them. So I take it very seriously now that I am in this leadership position where I can influence others. So this is a huge passion point of mine. And it is something that I actually devote quite a bit of time to because, you know, you have to uh, spend time and resources where it means something to you. Right. And as I get older and more mature in my career, I realize that uh, that's where I want to spend my time. So I am very lucky and very fortunate to be where I am. And I want to continue to nurture others uh, to be one of me one day. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and, and, and I appreciate it. that's why I've had you on so many times as well. I say as you get older, as I got older and have, you know, two daughters now, it's important for me as well. That's why it's a topic that's passionate for me as well, because I want people to have role models. And to that point, I mean, you've been a great mentor to a lot of people in my audience as well. I know people have reached out to you. I've had people come up to me at conferences and talk about, you know, the Sarah Park podcast that they watched and 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 and, and matter of fact at the last conference i went there was someone came up to me who wanted to reach out to you and i was able to make that connection for both you and them because they were struggling in in a role that they really couldn't advance in and they were Mm -hmm. they needed that mentorship and Mm -hmm. some some advice that they probably knew Mm -hmm. but needed to hear from someone like yourself so i appreciate what you've been to my audience as well because i hear it at the conferences as well so so i want to thank you for the past four years of of being that role model for others and and being available to my audience for advice for mentorship as well so i thank you for that as well Thanks for that. Um, In fact, uh, there are many people that reach out to me, kind of cold calling, if you will, through Mm -hmm. LinkedIn or sometimes uh, with your introduction. And I never say no, because I can give 30 minutes, 45 minutes to somebody who wants to learn, who wants to uh, advance in their careers. So uh, I'm glad that they come my way. Okay. So So I appreciate you making connections. So in the last couple minutes I have, unfortunately, we can't do another 30 minute episode. We will in the future. We we can't do one now. With that women in the field, I mean, it's it's something passion to yourself. It's passion to me as well. Uh, Right now, about uh, over a third of my guests have been women over the past four years. Full disclosure, though. When I put out the call for speakers or IBF puts out the call for, you know, articles, people to submit the articles, only about 10, 12 percent of those submissions come Mm -hmm. from women, Mm -hmm. sadly. Mm -hmm. The reason there's over a third of the audience that are on stage or articles is because we actively recruit. And and I I understand that is something I learned early on that I need to do. I I need to create, you know, people on stage so other people see people that, oh, I can do that as well. I get that that's part of my responsibility as a host and and being part of IBF Mm -hmm. as well. But that said... How do we get more women to become active, become part to they're they're, they're doing great jobs. They're thought leaders in the field. How do we get them to share through articles and on stage as well? 
I think people like me need to be more open and visible out there. Again, I said role models are very, very important. And when we are out there um, showing what's possible, I think there will be more women taking courage and uh, be encouraged to step up and volunteer. Okay. That's one of the ways that I know I can contribute. Well, that's the reason why I keep having you come back over and over again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and we have a good time when we are talking. We and, do. You know, we talking do. about forecasting and supply chain planning. How dorky. <laughs> we, but we love it. We're nerds. Come on. <laughs> you know, we, we, yeah. we, sell, we celebrate both, you know, Pi Day and the Ides of March. We're, we're <laughs> well-rounded well right. nerds. <laughs> Um, yeah. <laughs> <It's all. laughs> yeah. Well, so last thing then, uh, do you see things changing over the past four years? I had you on four years ago as a role model to, you know, to have you as a voice uh, for women in the Asian community as well. Have you seen things changing over the four years? Have, have things really started to change and is there hope going forward? I think so. Um, I see more and more women, women of various backgrounds and ethnicities and experiences um, at IBF conferences uh, in many different audiences. And I'm very encouraged by that. I am no longer the only woman in the room. And I am very proud to say 51% of my team is women. So uh, leaders like myself, uh, we have to make a difference because we have those decision rights and uh, we have to continue to encourage and develop um, others that look like me. And I'm very happy to see um, things improving and changing for real. So I appreciate the focus that you continue to bring to this because it's very important. All right. Thank you very much. So, well, I so I wanted to have you on as, as one of the, you know, most watched podcasts and guest wise that I had. <laughs> I had to have you back on. And plus, you're always a great, great guest. So I wanted to share this. So unfortunately, we don't have 30 minutes now, but I am guarantee we're going to have you on again in the future. That sounds great. Have a wonderful birthday week and congratulations you. on your 100th episode. And thank you so much for having me on it again. It's an honor every time. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. So, And I will see you later. Yes, sounds good. Take care. All right. Bye. Bye. I'd like to congratulate Eric on his upcoming uh, 100th episode. And uh, he's been a great asset to our team and demand planning. Uh, He's, he's really helped me out and my employees, we've really sat and looked at his podcasts and enjoyed quite a, quite a few of them and uh, he's uh, provided a lot of good information to us. Thank you. I mentioned, it's great having Sarah back on. I, I mentioned she was the second most watched podcast and listened to. First most with a guest, but second most watched. The number one by far was actually in June of 2020 was developing your demand planning career. I don't know if because it was maybe quick bait type of, of title, developing your demand planning career, or it was because it's required watching for a 400 level college course, a level course. So there's actually college kids that have to watch me every semester talk about developing your demand planning career. I know, I feel sorry for them. A lot has changed. A lot has changed over the four years. And I said, the content continues to evolve. The one thing I want to do now that, that, that we've gone, if, you, if you've been this long into it, you've, you've lasted past the four-minute mark, you're almost at the 30-minute mark now, or actually surpassed the 30-minute mark at this for this podcast, a little bit longer for this one. I want to ask you a question because you are the serious watchers, the serious listeners right now. What do you want to hear going forward? we got another 99 episodes to go. What do you want to hear in the next few podcasts? Who do you want to see me interview? If you have a special guest or you think you want to be a guest as well, some of the best episodes I have are people that come on and just sharing their personal experiences. Those are some of the, by far the best guests I have. If you want to share your story, reach out to me, eric at ibf.org. That's eric at ibf.org. If you have something, topic you want me to talk about, let me know, eric at ibf.org, eric at ibf.org. And as I said, when I was talking to Sarah, 
only 10, 12% are women that submit. I'd love to hear half the audience out there are no are women. Submit. If you want to be on the podcast, you have something to share. Trust me. We can figure out a good podcast of something you can share with this audience that is relevant and they're going to enjoy. If you have a topic you want to hear about, let me know. So reach out to me. Let me know what the next 99 podcasts are going to be. I want to hear from you. Bom, estou aqui em Chicago, na, esse ano, 2024, no evento, no maior evento de SNOP do mundo. E eu estou aqui também para agradecer a IBF e o Eric pelo 100 episódios do IBF On Demand. It's a, uma oportunidade da gente aprender um pouco mais desse mundo aqui e pegar todas as informações direto da fonte, onde nós conseguimos aplicar e trazer os melhores resultados para nossos clientes, para nossas empresas. Gostaria de agradecer muito ao Eric e à IBF por essa oportunidade de estar aqui novamente. Muito obrigado. It was a couple years later that I actually had on this next guest. We originally talked in Amsterdam quite a few years ago, and we've actually stayed connected and close since then. Said she was the second most viewed guest from Europe, actually Sylvania, Help me welcome my next guest, Elena. I said she was the second most viewed. I'm sorry, second. You didn't you didn't quite top out the first, but but you're the second most viewed guest that I've had on. So Elena, then welcome back. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> Good to be back. I'm excited to have you on here for my 100th episode. When I was thinking of guests to bring on, you were one of them that I had to to bring back. Being, being you were the second most. I, I know you were, were str- trying to get that first. It was a kind of a competition for you, but you're, you're up there. <laughs> <laughs> I think the topic we originally had when you came on was about supply versus demand, which is the reason why it got a lot of a lot of attention, a lot of hits when we talked about supply versus demand. So I hope everybody goes back and rewatches that podcast, gets those numbers up uh, for her her podcast then as well. But I know since we originally did that podcast, you've actually put helped put together some teams. You've matured your SNOP process a lot over those past few years. You've actually taken on a lot more responsibility there as well. I mean. You've actually grown in your role and Dan Foss's SNOP process since you've been on the podcast. Is that correct? Yeah, indeed. Uh, covering demand and supply rules for the SAP excellence in uh, our segment at the moment. Yep, and I know you're always traveling around, you know, teaching and, and, and doing a lot as well. So, yeah, you, you've definitely been keeping busy. Now, over those four years since we started the podcast and originally had you on, over those four years, I'm sure if you had a chance to go back or some of your lessons learned, when we originally talked about supply versus demand, you're building teams, you're growing your SNOP process. So there's a lot you've done and a lot you're doing. What were some of the biggest lessons learned you had over the past four years then? I would, I would return and say it again, it's all about people. It's all about building the team. And uh, the team might be the functional, the people who do that. It could be also a qualified user or community in general. Uh, Like-minded people, colleagues who can sit together and improve whatever is going on. Because process, it's built by people. Tools, they're built by people. And if you have the team, the core team, who are inspired and inspiring, then you can also get to the better and have the continuous improvement. Um, the big thing that uh, I understood and I keep understanding, that is, of course, about uh, making the roles and responsibilities and setting the boundaries and ba- mandate from the start. Regardless whether you work in demand planning or supply planning, you need to know exactly where you sit, what are your roles, what are your, what are your weekly, monthly responsibilities, who are your stakeholders, who are your partners, who you can uh, discuss or make new ideas, make the approvals. So that should be really crisp and clear from the start. And then it's so much easier on the way. So it's truly is defining those roles up front is really the important thing. And, and I think a lot of people, they kind of confuse those roles sometime and they mix them up, uh, you know, so really having a defined, this is a demand planner, this is a supply planner, this is materials, really 
you you help define each of those goals goals is what you do uh, at your organization correct yeah yeah define the roles and then deploy it right explain that okay if if the role is called like that these are the tasks on a very detailed level up to i don't know up to the tools that needs to be used up to the uh to the tasks that have to be performed so to make it as fluff as less fluffy as possible and uh to it might be different right from place to place organization to organization but it needs to be clear for your particular place where you sit if you understand it if i understand it that i'm able to explain and train the others and this is where the training comes right because when you see the picture clearly and uh you have to do that when you start the big and complex process like SIAP, the business planning process so when you see the rules clearly you can also deploy them and train people what has to be done here and there now you mentioned the training part of things i mean i'm assuming when you have roles, you want to provide the skills they need. So training is as far as building teams, building your PSYOP, uh, you know, maturity. A lot of that's, I mean, I, I know you, so I know the answer. Uh, it's fundamentals. Training is part of that fundamentals. On that, and you do a lot there at Dan Foster then as well. Absolutely. And uh, you can also, you, you also define those trainings for the different level. Let's say the person who should understand in general on the top level uh, on where the things are coming from, and it will be completely one set of trainings. And then you have the demand planner who needs to know everything about the material disaggregation and statistical forecasting, right? And then you have the production planner who needs to be very clear about how to uh, open the order and uh, follow it up. So this comes these trainings, it cannot be one fits all. Now, here you go, there is a 10 minute video and you learn it, right? So you really define for which audience you want those trainings and education to be done at which time, whether it's on the introduction when they just join or it's something to grow the scale, to uh, explain something new because the processes are always changing. We also have the new tools being onboarded or develop our own. So for all of those, you need to have this metrics of trainings uh, and make sure that people follow it. Make sure that everybody does their thing, kind of a license to operate. Uh, yes. Um, yeah. I, and I like that you, you put thought into your training. That's the reason I wanted to kind of have you on again and share that with the audience, because I, I think that's an important message is you put thought into the who's going to get what training. And to that point, I mean, we mentioned there's a separate role for demand and supply. Do you think demand should learn a little bit about supply? Supply should learn a little bit of demand? I mean, is that that cross training is is valuable then, I'm sure, as well? Obviously. Um, we have these six level metrics. And depending on where you sit, you need to know it. Uh, either you're a mega qualified user and you should have a six, right? Or maybe you just need to know that it exists and then it's a one. Or maybe somewhere in between two or three where you need to orient the, within the process, know who to ask, maybe know the basic transactions, but you don't need to be a mega expert to do that. So it's it's never just one and everybody has to do that. It really depends on where you are, how ex experienced, where you want to be, you know, because on the same scale, you could grow as much as you want. So. With a hundred episodes, I'm sure we, we we have a whole metrics and of different learning and, and podcasts people can consume and create their own metrics then for people then as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's a matter of finding a good of having a good filing system, you know, where you have the indexes and then people can navigate and find. Okay, I would like to know about the demand. Here you go, three of those. I would like to know about the side pros and here you go, three, two of those. Uh, this is, yeah, that just helps uh, navigate within the vast majority of knowledge. Okay, so it, 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 closing out now, so we've been through four years, you've been on before, and welcome back for the 100th episode. Going forward then, our original topic we talked about was supply versus demand. Is that still going to be two separate roles going forward? We still need to give them different types of focus going uh, forward i mean it's always going to be two separate types of skill sets two separate types of responsibilities yeah definitely both of them will 
grow um, themselves with the demand planning going to data science, right, and supplying more on communication and so on. But they are different roles. And uh, the bigger your organization is, the bigger the world is, the, the more focus on two separate um, set of activities uh, will take place. All righty. Well, thank you for being part of the anniversary episode. So I'm, I was pleasure. happy to have you on there. So, so and I'm Thanks, sure we're going to see each other at, in Amsterdam or in the future. Of course. <laughs> Congratulations on 100 episode of my favorite podcast. I would like to see another 100 and then another 100 more and learn a lot from you. And by the way, Eric, happy birthday. <laughs> well, I thank you very much. Hey, Eric, uh, congratulations on the 100th episode. The podcasts are very educational, helpful, really enjoy them. Uh, I look forward to them when I can, uh, can watch them. So keep it going, go strong, appreciate it. When you get four years of content, you grow over that four years. And it is remarkable for myself to go back and watch that four years of evolution and seeing the different people that I've had on and how information has continued to improve over those four years. And just so you know, there is multiple ways you can get this content. If you're watching right now, how you doing? You can actually listen to these two. It's actually twice as many people listen than watch. If you are listening right now, you're missing a lot. You're missing the great scenery we have in the background. You're missing my interactions. You miss this beautiful face. So you can actually go back, watch these podcasts. If you've missed some of them, if you only listened to them in the past, go watch. You might be able to pick up on a few things. There's a whole content. Matter of fact, my math is correct. We have about 99 other episodes you can go back and listen to and watch if you haven't to binge watch on some afternoon check them out welcome 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 congratulations eric on your 100th episode of the podcast it's been extremely valuable to learn from it and contribute to it as uh, one of your guests looking forward to many many more episodes to come congrats again well that's a wrap i want to thank a, a few people here at the 100th episode you can't do a 100th episode without thanking some people first of all i want to thank scott uh, this honestly could not happen without you, Scott. So thank you very much. I was floundering in a basement, not knowing what I was doing. And he added the final touches to make this a truly a podcast. And it would not have lasted without that professional touch. And I want to thank you, Scott, for producing it, the writing it, for, for making, you know, pushing me to do different things in, in the podcast creating the background, everything you've done. So thank you very much, Scott. And, and th you're, you're not only a good friend, but help make this 100 episodes. I want to thank the guests because these wouldn't be a podcast without guests. I am knowledgeable about some things. I, I have some experience, but it's really the thought leaders and experts that come on that really make this a podcast. I want to thank all the all the different guests that I've had o over the past four years as well. And finally, the audience. This truly would not be a podcast without the audience. I mean, I started with just a few hundred people watching, and now it's a few thousand people watching, and and that truly is it means a lot that that people actually appreciate my humor, or at least accept my humor, and. and know that we have something that we are sharing that that truly means a lot that we've had an audience and and over over four years and all the followers i i, I want to thank everybody for making this truly special for dad that's not your plaque it, it, it's this isn't this is your plaque oh okay okay so I guess this is what you get for 10,000 followers. The other one's for 100,000 followers. This is what you get for 10,000 followers. So, so thanks for making this for me. And, and with this, I can't do an anniversary special without my biggest guest, the most talked about at all the conferences. Yeah, people come up to me and everything. But the thing I hear a lot is, oh, I saw your daughter on the podcast. I don't know how many times I hear that at a conference. So 
we first started this, she was 10 years old. She's grown up quite a bit since then. She's been on a few times. She's actually interviewed me on this, and we've switched roles on a podcast. You can go back and, and check out her evolution over the past few years. But I said, my biggest talked about guest, I couldn't do an episode without her. So how does it feel to be a influencer? My fans love me. <laughs> Speaking like a true Wilson right there. Not so humble host, Sophia Wilson there. So with that, what do you think of your dad's 100th episode being on the, you know, being a podcaster? I mean, what do you think of this? You would think in four years it would be a little bit better. <laughs> As I mentioned, my biggest critic, Sophia. But y- your friends have, have watched these, though. I mean, mm-hmm. they're, they're your biggest fans. I can say that. Yeah, I, I actually... You you mentioned one of your classes. I was actually you showed my podcast to one of your I classes. I did. I put your podcast on the big whiteboard in front of my whole class. And they all were like just mesmerized. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, maybe my audience isn't your 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 friend group and everything, but when you grow up, though, I mean, I, I get this. I get this question at conferences, so I'm going to ask this question to you. Are you going to follow in your dad's footprints? Are you going to be a planner and into business forecasting and SNOP when you grow up? I get this question, so I have to ask it. So for the audience out there, they're the ones asking, are you going to follow in your dad's footsteps? No. (laughs) Sorry. So that's okay. Blaze your own path. Whatever you're going to do, I'm sure you're going to be great at it. And I'm sure it'll probably be in front of a camera in the future as well. So, so, so I want to thank you, everybody. So with that, I'm going to go take a vacation and start planning episode number 101. My name is Eric. You can find me at eric at ibf.org. That's eric at ibf.org. Thanks to Arkiva for driving business transformation by solving what others cannot. I'm betting the logo is going to be right over top of your face about right now. So <laughs> come back here. So I want to thank IBF. Uh, I want to thank everybody out there. It's been a great 100 episodes. Please share, interact, uh, continue this journey. And and another fact, my catchphrase at the very end of these that you always, people repeat back to me. If you didn't know where it came from, it was actually, there's another podcast out there that my daughter started watching. I watched because I appreciated the humor out there called Odds One Out that actually had a catchphrase at the end of his YouTube that was something about fastening your seatbelt. I thought I needed something quirky for mine. During COVID, I was sick of hearing about wash your hands, wash your hands. I thought people understood that, but I guess people need to be minded. So after four years, after 100 episodes, I'm still going to remind you 101 times now. Don't forget, say it together. Wash Wash your hands. hands. Eric Wilson, 100th episode of the podcast on demand. Do you even know anything about math? Are you counting correctly? I I think I saw Wilson take off his shoes and counting his big toe and his little toe. That's possible. So it may not be it. But, hey, if you say it's 100, more power to you. Congratulations. Congrats, buddy.